As we start into the states of matter unit, we first have to talk about intermolecular forces. Because we have to answer the question, okay, well, we know what holds a water molecule together. That's the covalent bond between the hydrogen and oxygens. But what holds water together? Why does water form puddles? And that's what intermolecular forces are, because they are inter. They are between the molecules. And so looking at intermolecular forces, like I said, they are the attractive forces between molecules. And they are significantly weaker than bonds. However, they are critical in what they do. Um, gases have the weakest of the intermolecular forces, solids are the strongest, and liquids are somewhere in the middle. The first one is called dispersion, or the London dispersion, or the induced dipole. It's, I've seen it called all three things, um, but dispersion is kind of its normal default name. All right, so this is something that is present in all atoms and all molecules to some degree. And what it is, it's caused by an uneven arrangement of electrons within a molecule. So think about it. If you are a carbon atom and you have six electrons, what is the likelihood that those six electrons are going to be perfectly arranged and absolutely perfectly separated from each other in the perfect arrangement? Uh, unlikely. Um, sometimes you may have four on one side and two on the other, or five on one side and one on the other. Who knows? But what happens is, when that happens, whichever side has more of the electrons on it is going to have a slight negative charge. And we do this with a lowercase delta, which is kind of a D with a tail on top. And so that's a delta negative, meaning small change. Now, we've already seen capital delta, meaning big change, like change in temperature or change in enthalpy. This is small change. And so we use a lowercase delta, meaning small. And so we've got delta minus and delta plus. Um, you've seen even the smaller version of this if you do calculus where you have like dx over dy, that kind of stuff. That's a smaller version of this change, meaning infinitesimally small change. But either way, so the side that has more electrons is over here and it gets the slight negative charge. Well, if this side has a slight negative, that means this side has a slight positive. And that's what we call a dipole because it has two poles. It has a positive pole and a negative pole. This type of dipole is temporary and it can change direction as the electrons move around the molecule. However, the dipole on one atom will induce a similar dipole in its neighbors because the positive side is going to attract the electrons in its neighbor and the negative side is going to push them away. And so you end up getting similar dipoles occurring across its neighbors. And then we get this slight attraction between positive and negative poles in between them. So this slight negative here is going to attract this slight positive here. And same thing here, creating a slight attraction. Okay. So this series of dipoles will create a weak attraction between the atoms or molecules. The more electrons that are involved, the stronger the attraction will be. Just think about it. Copper only, I mean carbon only has six. And so it can only go so far, but if you take something like uranium that's got 92 electrons, that 92 electrons can get, you know, I can have like 60 on one side and only 32 on the other side. And so that's a much bigger difference than three. That's a difference of 30. And so you get a stronger pull and therefore you get a stronger attraction. All right. And so it gets stronger as the atom or molecule gets bigger just because you have more electrons in play. We can see this when we look at the halogens. That fluorine and chlorine are the smallest and they're gases because they have a weak attraction between them. Bromine has more electrons and there's more attraction. And all of a sudden we're going from a gas to a liquid. And you get down to iodine. Iodine has the most electrons out of the group. More electrons creates a stronger dispersion force and strong enough to actually make it a solid at room temperature as opposed to a liquid or a gas. All right, so that's the first force. It is the weakest of the three that we're going to look at. However, it is always present and it always plays a role. And depending on the size of the molecule, it may actually be the most important, even though it is in fact the smallest. The second intermolecular force is called dipole-dipole. And dipole-dipole only occurs in pol polar covalent molecules. So instead of having a temporary or induced dipole, they have a permanent one. So they have some type of permanent dipole because they're polar. And this is, you know, kind of how you would affect. I think it works that the stronger the polar bond, 
the stronger this effect. Um, so the dispersion will still be present, but depending upon the overall size of the polar and nonpolar sections, different things can occur. Um, and so that becomes important. So for small molecules, the dipole dipole is usually stronger. For large molecules, the dispersion will usually be the stronger of the two. Now, when we think of polar molecules, we think of things like water. Well, water actually is so polar that it ends up in its own group. It ends up in this third group called hydrogen bonding. And in hydrogen bonding, it's a special type of dipole-dipole with a nitrogen-hydrogen, an oxygen-hydrogen, or a fluorine hydrogen bond is present. Now, hydrogen bonding is not a bond between the hydrogens. It's not a bond where the hydrogen of water is attracted to the other hydrogen on the other waters. That's not what's going on. It's called a hydrogen bond because it involves some bond with hydrogen between nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine. These are highly polar and create some type of bonding going on. So here in water, the oxygen is negative because it's got the higher electronegativity, so it's attracting the electrons. So it's negative and the hydrogens are going to be slightly positive. And so we create this attraction here and we call that a hydrogen bond. It goes from the positive hydrogen to the negative oxygen. Same thing over here and again and again. All right, so that's what's going on there. This is the strongest of the intermolecular forces. And we see it in things like DNA. You know, because we got here, we've got a nitrogen and hydrogen and therefore we got hydrogen bonding available and that's what's going on in holding the DNA together. We can see the strength of this when we do um, a belly flop. So that hydrogen bonding is literally holding the surface tension of the water together. You do a belly flop, you hit the water, ouch, it hurts. And so that's what's going on there. So just like dispersion and dipole-dipole, you know, dispersion is present, it plays a role, it affects how things work. So the stronger intermolecular forces means that atoms will be held together more tightly. This results in the following. Higher melting points. The stronger force will require more energy to change the molecules from a solid to a liquid. Methane has a very, very, it becomes a liquid at negative 182 degrees. Uh, phosphorus trihydride a little bit warmer because it's a polar but then water all the way up to zero degrees same thing with boiling points going to a gas um, there's very little force holding this together so it's almost always it's a gas very easily it doesn't take much kinetic energy to break these bonds causing it to form because that's what's going on here it's temperature is a member a measure of the average kinetic energy so in water that hydrogen bond can withstand a whole lot of vibration and movement in those molecules before it goes from a solid to a liquid. Because it's got a strong attraction fighting against that kinetic energy. You know, you got the water molecules violently vibrating and moving back and forth at a higher temperature than they do for the methane here. Methane, they're moving like this. But because there's very little to hold it together, it's a really small molecule, they simply start moving more and more and you get a liquid. And then you get just a little bit warmer, then they're all separate and zooming around in different directions as a gas. There's nothing to hold them together, so it doesn't take much movement, much heat or temperature for them to, to separate from each other. Where we do a polar bond and we get that dipole-dipole, it's holding a little bit better. But you can see the magnitude of difference that happens when we add a, a hydrogen bond, how much stronger it is than a simple dipole-dipole. And so this is a huge difference. This is significantly stronger than these. It takes a lot of energy to break that hydrogen bond and to create steam. And so that's what's going on there with intermolecular forces. They are the key thing that causes the states of matter to be what they are.